KUAW.org or go to the TuneIn app and search KUAW. Listen to us. We're on 24 hours a day. That's KUAW Radio, Kansas City's global community radio station. And this is what you hear every day from noon till 2. Don't miss the Cheryl Underwood Show. Where you at, baby? Cheryl, I'm at my first alma mater, Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. CAU was the first HBCU in the southern United States. Shout out to our affiliate HBCU. All right, it's Tyrone Gathers Jr., your host of The Source of the Ink, we're live on KUAW. Knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Kansas City's right affairs are also Kansas City's fastest growing internet radio station as well. You can check out this broadcast on a number of ways. You can hit us up at KUAW.org, type in uh, listen now, it'll take you right to us. You can also go to the TuneIn app on your mobile device and type in KUAW Radio, as well as if you have an Echo or a Google Play. I'm sorry, a Google, a Google Echo or an, Am or an Alexa, you can say, hey, play KUAW, and it'll play for you. You can also go to YouTube, KUAW Radio. You can go to Facebook, KUAW Radio, or you can go to Periscope, Twitter, KUAW Radio, and I know there's one more. I got them all. I got them all. So, so, so KUAW, Twitch, yes, the new one, Twitch. So KUAW is also on Twitch. So you can hit us up on there as well, too. Also, if you want to call in, you can go to KUAW. I'm sorry, 816-599-6893. Or you can go to KUAW985 at gmail.com. Now, I'm going to share this um, um, broadcast to a couple of pages real quick. This um, particular broadcast is um near and dear close to me really all my shows are pretty near and dear but this one uh really hits home to a lot of things that i stand for so let me share this around to a couple of uh, pages and if you are a friend of this station or if you are a friend of myself or if you are a friend of my son now you can see why it's close to home please uh, share this uh, broadcast. Let me um, share this to a few more pages, and then I'll go ahead and give you all my undivided attention. And of course, I got to share it to the block because them brothers are always, they always got me. Okay. And one more. And, and yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This, you'll, you'll see why based on um, uh, what the content of this broadcast is. Okay, so, um, <clears throat> we had, first of all, Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a prosperous holiday season, whether you celebrated Kwanzaa, uh, Christmas, Hanukkah, Boxing Day, any other holiday that you celebrate, hope, hopefully it was a blessed one. Uh, prayers go to my brothers and sisters who, you know, lost family members and it was kind of a rough uh, holiday season for you. And also a happy new year. And I pray there's a prosperous new year for you all as well. Also, um, well, with that being said, when the holiday season comes, different families have traditions. Whether it's getting together, whether it's sharing a meal, opening gifts, celebrating principles, whatever it is. I hope that, you know, your tradition was worthwhile. Well, I had a tradition, and my tradition for a while was to not really celebrate seasonal things when it came to the particular holidays. Well, things got a little bit different. Uh, my son was getting a little bit older. He's getting more vocal now, and um, he kept wanting to go see the lights. And I remember that one tradition for me when I was growing up was looking at Christmas lights. And a uh, shout out to my uncle, uh, Tim Gathers. Uh, may he rest in peace. We lost him recently. He, um, when I was younger, one of my earliest memories of the holiday season was him taking myself and my sister and I believe my cousin. I don't know if they remember, 
But I remember like it was yesterday, actually going down to the plaza and seeing the Christmas lights come on. And every year I've always been fascinated with Christmas lights because that to me, that's like the ushering of the Christmas spirit and of the holiday season. Well, I kind of been in a funk with it for a while. And I said to myself, well, you know, you know, I really, I definitely don't want to do the holiday piece this year because, you know, I lost the matriarch of our family, my aunt Tini in February. And then we lost uncle Tim, um, you know, in um, November. So I definitely wasn't, you know, fooling with anything holiday. Well, kids have a way of pulling your heartstrings and getting you out of your holiday funk. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, out of your, out of your mood. So my son was really wanting to see these lights and I've been, you know, really trying to shoot for a time for him to go. So there's one place where I used to like to go. You know what I said used to because they all changed. And um, I told my son, I said, hey, kid, um, do you want to go and look at the lights with your daddy? And of course, he lit up literally like Christmas tree. And uh, he said, yeah. So he and I went out and picked out a tree, got a tree for him. Like I said, you know, I was doing it for him. And um, he wanted to go see the lights. So I won, so I made it a day out of it. And there's one place where I like to go. And I told him, I said, well, I used to go to Longview and I used to go to, um, and I found out, well, you know, Longview got a long line. I said, well, let's go to Swole Park. So he went to Swole Park. And when we got there, that line was just wrapped out in the middle of the street. And I said, I'm not doing this, man. I mean, you know, I, they don't like long lines. And he looked at me and I could tell he was um, really wanting to see the last. I said, hold on, son. I said, there's a place called uh, uh, out here uh, off War Parkway. It's called uh, Armor Fields uh, Home Association. And every year they do this real extravagant light show. I said, you want to go check it out? He said, yeah. And I said, well, each house in the neighborhood, for the most part, they have a competition of lights. And they do a real good job. I said, as a matter of fact, I said, um, uh, last weekend, Daddy did some recon, and I drove through, and I kind of checked out some of the lights. He said, okay. And he, he was very happy. And plus, it was a me and him thing. You know, when I was his age, whenever, and really to this age now, whenever it's time to go hang out with Daddy, oh, yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, we're good. So we drive to the Armor Fields Home Association, and if you – um. Wanted to know where this is. The Armor Fields Home Association is in the 64133 zip code in the Kansas City, Missouri area. It is bordered on Warner Road, 65th Street, Ward Parkway, and West Gregory Boulevard. So it fits in that square of those um, streets. So I pull up, and um, lo and behold, I was right. It was a it was a competition of, of all these houses and it was literally, it, it was lit up. I mean, I would say about 90% of these houses was participating. It was, I mean, it, it, it was, it was a sight. I mean, and each house had their own theme. Some houses had a, you know, uh, uh, I saw one house had a Hanukkah theme. The rest of them had Christmas themes, but there were lights everywhere. And my son and I came on a good night. We came on the night where it was a planetary uh, alignment where all the planets were aligned up. So not only were we seeing the lights, on the street, we also saw the lights that, you know, the good Lord put up in the sky for us. So we pulled up, and as soon as we got out of the car, I told my son, I said, let's go ahead and park. So we parked, because I wanted to actually walk. It was a nice night. It was a nice 50-degree night. So we get out, and um, when we got out of the car, uh, my son was excited. You know, he wanted to take off, but, I, you know, said, oh, you know, let's just take our time. And we walked, and, uh, you know, we stayed on the, on the sidewalk, because those are public streets, and uh, we saw – couple of houses that were real nice. Now, I, if I was thinking, I would have posted some pictures and kind of kind of showed you all some of the pictures. But I mean, like, seeing my son's eyes light up like it did, that made me feel very special. And I mean, you know, it, it made me feel, I started feeling all warm. You know, not, not to be cliche, but I started feeling very warm inside when it came to this whole holiday season. And when we got out, there was a, a family that actually lived in the area well, they were like two houses down. They were very welcoming. They were like, hey, how are you guys doing? I said, well, you know, we're doing great. And they said, hey, um, uh, are you enjoying the night? I said, yeah, we came out here and looked at the lights. And they said, uh, well, we're looking at this planetary alignment. And one, a couple of the gentlemen um, stood back, and they actually, you know, pointed out which planet was which. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a big astronomy buff, and I kind of sat back, and they were kind of showing my son the, uh, you know, what planet was, 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 was closest to the moon. And I was telling my son, yeah, it's very, it's very weird that, that the brightest planets that you see closest to us 
are closest to our moon are the farthest away, and the dimmer ones are the ones that are closest to us. So we kind of had a conversation about that, and we were educating each other's kids and each other about what we saw. And it was a great start. Note I said it was a great start. Um, as um, we were walking down the street, I noticed a few things. I'm going to put a pin in that right there. I want to give you a brief history of the Armor Fields Homeowner Association. <clears throat> Just bear with me here because I'm still kind of um, shook on um, what took place. Okay. And I want to find this particular link because this one, the Armor Fields Home Association is one of the most popular subdivisions in Brookside, I'm sorry, in the Brook, excuse me, Brookside area, excuse me. It gets its name from the fact that the land was once owned by the Armour family of Chicago meatpacking fame. J.C. Nichols purchased the land in 1922 and continued with construction for the next decade. I'm going to stop right there and highlight J.C. Nichols. J.C. Nichols is known for constructing the plaza, the Country Club Plaza. The Country Club Plaza is the oldest shopping mall in the United States. Also, J.C. Nichols is responsible for a lot of the real estate in town and also the notorious, what, Truce Divide? Yeah. And if you're not familiar with that, Truce separates, it's, it's a racial divide in Truce. I'm, I'm sorry, in the Kansas City, Missouri. On the east side of Truce, you see more African-American people of color homes. And on the west side of Truce, you see more white-owned uh, homes. Matter of fact, if you got a three-bedroom, two-house, I'm sorry, three-bedroom, two-bathroom house on the west side of Truce, it is way more expensive, probably hundreds of thousands more than on the east side of Truce if it was the same house. So J.C. Nichols is probably one of the, the grandfathers of the racism in Kansas City. So with me saying that, it makes sense that my son and I experienced what we experienced at Armor Fields. When we got there, of course, you're probably going to say, well, Tyrone, you were walking where you weren't supposed to be. First of all, it's a public street. If it's a public street, I can walk anywhere I want. Now, we were on the sidewalks, walking up, walking up and down the sidewalks, being respectful to people's property, observing the, um, the artwork that we saw with the Christmas lights in the, on, on, on different homes. Not only were my son and I out there, there were other residents out there, as well as people who were parking their cars and doing the exact same thing we were doing as well. It was an actual showcase. Now, the problem that I had was a couple of things. One, I want to give a shout out to that family. I don't have your name, but I know exactly where you live. Well, I shouldn't say it like that. I know the area in which you live. And um, um, if I could like send a thank you, I would, because you all were very, very welcoming to myself and my son. And, uh, and, and you were very hospitable. I mean, we weren't even out of the car yet, for real, and you all are very welcoming for my son and I to come down and meet with you at your home. So I really respect you, and I thank you for that, because hospitality is a big plus when you got visitors. However, the other residents weren't like that. Uh, we got very, very, very unwelcoming looks. Um, what really hurt me is my son... At the time, he was 45, and I just had a birthday. So happy birthday, son. December 30th was your day. Um, he's a kid. He's very, he's, he's very welcoming. And my son would speak to people. That's what he does. He says hi all the time. And he would speak to people and say, hello, how are you doing? And the looks that people would give my child, it, it, it made my temperature boil. I did not like that. My child's innocent. And... He was a guest in your homeowner association, in your neighborhood, and he was saying hello, and he was waving, and he was being welcoming to show gratitude. And the fact that I saw people turn their noses up at a toddler, ignore a toddler, and stare at him as if they were trying to figure out what he was, I didn't like that. You can do whatever you want to do to me. Whatever. But when it comes to my child, that's where I draw the line. 
also what we experienced uh, when we were walking down the street uh, my son saw me uh, speak to people and say hello and, and, and compliment the houses my son saw his father ignored he saw his father um, disrespected there were people that actually you know the stereotypical grabbing your person running there were people that did that they would um, actually uh, look at look at me and look at my son and literally walk off the sidewalk into the street on the other side of the street. Um, but the icing on the cake, and this happened twice, and uh, I, I'm, I'm really trying not to get emotional with this because I really sat and thought about what took place. My son and I were crossing the street, and individuals failed to yield, and we have the right of way. There were people that kept driving when a man and his four-year-old child tried to cross the street. And uh, the whole time, all this stuff was going on. Um, I kept face and I made sure my son didn't see his daddy's cage shaking. And... Um, I was a man of my word to my child. My child wanted to see the lights. I wouldn't let nothing stop that. And the messed up part about it is I'm sitting here across from Mr. Walker, who, um, and his wife is watching too, Mrs. Walker, and they were alive during the Civil Rights Movement. Uh, I remember hearing some of the stories that my dad would say about growing up during that time period and what my mother would say and my mentors. It's one thing to hear somebody say what they went through, but to actually get a get a small taste of an experience that they went through, it was very eye-opening. So I sat there and I remember who I was. I remember who created me and I remember who my parents were. And uh, of course I became I, I kind of snapped back into reality and I walked past a group of individuals who were very disrespectful to my son and I and I said son he said yes daddy I said do you like these houses out here he said I do I do I said you like that house right there he said yes I said you like that house right there he said yes and the whole time these people are looking at me and I said son would you like to live out here he said, yes. And I said, guess what? And he looked at me and I said, if you want to live out here, then you can live out here. There's nothing stopping you or your daddy for, for, for us living out here. Nobody can tell you where you can and can't live. I mean that. And if you see a house out here that's for sale, and you want that, you can have it. And of course, my son smiled and said, okay, okay. I think I might wanna live out here if I want to. Four-year-old saying this, and I said it right in front of those people who disrespected me and my child. And the part that really messed me up is when my son and I was driving, I'm sorry, when we were walking and a car failed to yield. Both cars had parents in the cars with their children. Can you imagine that? Look at the lessons that I'm teaching my child versus the lessons that they're treating their child. Now, of course, for those of you who know, who really know me, you know that um, I'm really big on activism. And um, what I did was, and uh, after we got through, um, you know, I took my son to um, some other places or whatnot, and uh, we stopped by my mom's house, and she saw I was kind of shaken by the ordeal, and uh, she gave me my time, and I drafted a letter. The letter I drafted, I posted on my Facebook page, and I also gave a version of this letter to the Armor Fields Home Association. I actually sent it to them on December 22nd, 2020. And I want to read it to you all right now, live on the air. Uh, Dear Armor Fields Home Association, 
Each year, the houses in your neighborhood put together an elaborate light show. The diversity within your decorations illustrates the true meaning of the holiday season. Although your dwellings show this spirit, its inhabitants did not parallel the sentiments. Upon walking upon, I'm sorry, upon walking upon down your streets to observe the artistic splendor of your avenues, some of your residents gave my son and I the following. Negative looks, not stopping as we crossed the street, and ignoring a child when he delivered the warmest salutations and compliments. Please be advised that despite how we were treated, we did not respond to your behavior with the ill images that may have been in your mind. I'm sorry, that may have been, I'm sorry, let me go back. We didn't, please be advised that despite how we were treated, we did not respond to your behavior with the ill images that may have been in your minds about us. We continue to show that although we may not have been wanted by you, it did not ruin our festive expedition, or I'm sorry, expectations. With all due respect, we weren't there for you. Our mission was to share in the blessing of this season and thank God for the wonderful time that, he, that my son and I shared. Although a few extended gratitude, I'm sorry, although a few, we extend gratitude to the residents that were inviting. Regards, and I gave my name. Now, I sent this letter to Armor Fields on December 22nd. Now, the good thing about sending a, a, a message on Messenger is you can see not only when someone got it, you can also see when they looked at it. So, Armor Fields, you looked at this message December 22nd. I have yet to get a response. Out of respect for the media, I gave you all, what, roughly two, two and a half weeks to respond? I have not gotten a response back from you yet. You would think that if someone wrote you a letter with concern such as that, with, with concerns, and also despite what, what went on with your residence, still show respect, you will be respectful and at least respond to my correspondence. However, just like the residents in your neighborhood, just like the guests that your residents attracted, you still share the same disrespect. So, not only will this broadcast be shown to our viewers, I'm also going to tag your homeowner association in this broadcast so you can see that I'm not playing when it comes to my child, that I'm not playing when it comes to disrespect, that I'm not playing when it comes to ill behavior when it comes to um, race. <clears throat> so what I want to do is take a brief commercial break, and I want to come back and discuss this issue a little bit further. So stay tuned. All right, you're listening to KUAW Radio, Kansas City's global community radio station. We don't only bring you videos on Facebook and YouTube, but listen to our audio only where you'll get shows like Cheryl Underwood and Blues Time in the City. You can pick us up at www.kuaw.org or go to the TuneIn app and search KUAW. Listen to us. We're on 24 hours a day. That's KUAW Radio, Kansas City's global community radio station station. And this is what you hear every day from noon till two. Don't miss the Cheryl Underwood show. Where you at, baby? Cheryl, I'm at my first alma mater, Clark Atlanta University in Atlanta, Georgia. CAU was the first HBCU in the southern United States. Shout out to our affiliate ATL Talks in Atlanta, Georgia, and everyone getting out there to vote for those two Senate seats. We love you. That's what I'm talking. You are listening to KUAW Radio Home of the all-new Jamal Bakes Show, and I'm Jamal Bakes, and thank you so very much for listening to the station bringing you talk news, entertainment that you won't get anywhere else. K-U-A-W-N of and about our community. 
This is the last weekend before Christmas, and on Blue Simon and City, we're wrapping, get it, wrapping up our all Christmas blues and Southern Soul program. Oh, 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 Gene Bailey. We have a very special guest that you will definitely enjoy, and we'll hear from some of the artists that sing the Christmas blues. Join me, our oh, 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 Gene Bailey, for Blue Simon and City this weekend before Christmas, right here. This is comedian Janelle Banks, and you are listening to KUAW, Kansas City. KUAW listeners, this is Carl. All right, we're back from that little quick break. Had to pay some bills, give some respect to individuals who support this station. This is Tyrone Gathers Jr., your host of The Source of the Inkwell, live on KUAW, Knowledge, Understanding, and Wisdom. Kansas City is, I'm sorry, KUAW is Kansas City's fastest growing internet radio station you can check out this radio station and this broadcast and others like it on a number of platforms you can go to facebook youtube alexa google echo twitch twitter periscope and tune in and type in kuaw radio or i say hey play kuaw radio you can also call in at 816-599-6893 or email us at kuaw985 at gmail.com i um I'm talking about an incident that occurred on December 22nd with my son and I when we went to the Armor Fields Home Association's uh, lights, Christmas lights. Every year they put on a very grand Christmas lights extravaganza. It's a competition amongst the households. And my son and I went out there to check out the lights. And while we were there, we experienced some very discriminatory behavior. Um, discriminatory behavior as far as being ignored, people avoiding us, literally um, walking away from us in fear, um, just, just disrespect when my son spoke to them, as well as two times there were some failures to yield when he and I crossed the street. So we almost got run over twice when we had the right of way. Now, please note every resident was not like that. However, a vast majority of them were. A letter was drafted on December 22nd and sent to the Armor Fields Home Association uh, via Facebook Messenger. My records show that not only did they get the, the, the correspondence on December 22nd, they also view the correspondence on December 22nd. And I have yet to receive um, a response. Now, one thing that I like to say is that we need to support one another in regards to actions like this. Because this could be someone else's kid. It could be your child. It could be your friend's child. What we experienced was very disrespectful, it was very unwanting. Although we did go through some deplorable behavior, my son and I still handled ourselves with the utmost respect and dignity. Now, being that they all were trying to teach us a lesson, my son and I on the way out decided to play Fight the Power by Public Enemy on the radio as we left out of that homeowner association because in that particular neighborhood setting, there's an element that needs to be fought. <laughs> we, we don't stand by for discrimination on any kind in this family. Not at all. And the fact that the homeowner association could not respond back to my letter shows you what they think of my letter and people who look like me. Now, until you all can respond and give me some type of correspondence, I'm going to take what occurred to us as what it looked like, and that was racism. Now, let's look at the history of homeowner associations, because really, to be quite honest, homeowner, homeowners associations are rooted in racial beginnings. Now, if you notice, homeowner associations have a price. Why do you think homeowner associations have prices? Now, if you're ever lucky enough to um, have a home and, excuse me, um, and that home is in a high cost living area, more than likely you will have a homeowner association. Now, homeowners associations are set up to be exclusive. Now, if you noticed, if you look at Truce in the Kansas City, Missouri area, you see more homeowner associations on the west side of Truce than you do on the east side of truth. 
And on the east side of truth, you see more people of color than you do on the west side of truth. So why do you think that? Homeowner associations are designed to be exclusive. And why do you think people move to certain areas of town? To get rid of certain elements. And when I say certain elements, let's be real. J.C. Nichols. J.C. Nichols did not want black people living amongst white people. He did not. I'm not going to sugarcoat that. It is what it is. That's what he wanted. And to this day, it's still on like that. See, when you go and you move in these, near, uh, move, move in these neighborhoods, you are paying to not have certain people of certain colors or certain religions or certain socioeconomic backgrounds living in your area. Because, see, they feel that that depreciates the value of the neighborhoods. I had a student teacher that worked with me one time, and she actually used to work for the real estate. And she said that, that, that that's true. If you, that there were certain clauses and contracts that if you sold your homes to certain people of certain races, then automatically the value of your house depreciated. Now, most people have heard about a ton of homeowner association horror stories. Now, this includes pet bans, uh, sign size limits, uh, fights over flags, and in some cases, very, very stupid rules. And now I'm going to read some of the dumbest rules, and if I read them, they are kind of specific to certain things that you might stereotypically see in certain groups of people. First one, leaving your garage door open all day to prove nobody's living there, meaning that you can't store stuff in your garage. Specific, specific rules of color of swing sets and play, playhouses in your, back, in your backyard. Requirements for, bl uh, for blinds rather than curtains. Horizontal blinds, the ones um, that, that are dangerous for children or pets. A rule to park all vehicles in garages and not on streets. Not drying clothes in your backyard. Note, some states say that that's illegal. Uh, certain yard uh, items in your, uh, in your home. Now, I'm going to put a pin right there. I remember uh, we moved to uh, Lee Summit, Missouri when we were younger. And I remember uh, my, my dad was upset. And I said, why are you mad? He said, man, he said, I drove around the corner. And I saw a house with uh, a black jockey out in the front yard. So that homeowner association said that it was okay to have that, but not other things in your yard, which is very racist. Uh, and, if, and if you don't, and if you're not aware of that that uh, that jockey, you might want to look that up because it it it's some very racial backgrounds to that. Matter of fact, one story behind the racial uh, behind the lawn jockey is uh, George Washington. It goes back to, yes, one of your founding fathers had a uh, slave and that slave was holding the reins of his horse. And George Washington said, I want you to go and uh, hold the reins of the horse while I go into this bar. Well, Washington went into the bar, drunk all night, passed out, woke up the next morning. It was a very cold night. When I saw, saw that the slave was froze to death, but he was still holding the reins of that horse. Therefore, that's one story on where this came from. And either way, if you don't believe that, the fact of the matter that you got a, a, a caricature of a, of, of a stereotypical African-American male in your yard, that's still a problem. Requiring lawns, even in the desert. No politics or religion on your property. Hmm. All of these are petty, but homeowner associations have a darker past. Now, some homeowner, some homeowner associations feel that when they have these dues or these rules, that it keeps out, it keeps out a certain riffraff. Now, keep in mind, some people feel that me, people who look like myself or people who are from where I'm from, are, in fact, riffraffs. Now, I'll admit, my son and I, when we were dressed, my son had on a, a, a coat and a skull cap. I had on um, a military jacket, and my hat was turned backwards. Still, just because we dressed a certain way did not mean we acted a certain way. Matter of fact, uh, dress doesn't mean what you have up here doesn't mean what you have right here so right there the people in your residence armor fields home association already were having a preconceived notion that was ill about my son and myself uh, and myself <clears throat> now let's go back to um, some other pieces now, homeowner association dues, I'm sorry, homeowner association rules are very restrictive. And it's petty, I'm sorry, it's, it's pretty easy to enforce them. 
especially if you have people paying for the petty restrictions. Now, let's go back. Homeowner associations came in their own right in the 1950s and the 1960s. Now, during that time period, across the United States, you had a black flight. A black flight was you had African Americans who were starting to live in more areas of the town, of the city, of the town in which they were in, and they were steadily uh, moving in areas where whites did not want them there. So they started uh, migrating to suburbs. Now, suburbs were designed for whites to get away from blacks. Now, suburbs became more restrictive. And when they started begin becoming more restrictive, they started adding homeowner associations. And these rules were put in place to pretty much exclude the main three groups during that time period, Jews, blacks, and Asians. Now, Keep in mind, in 1948, the Supreme Court ruled that these covenants violated the Civil Rights Act of 1866. So although these rules violated the Civil Rights Act of 1866, homeowner associations still put these rules in place in the 1950s and the 1960s. So what am I saying? Homeowner associations that are exclusive like that have been illegal since 1866. Although they're, they've, been, they've been illegal since 1866, People are still going to homeowner associations, I'm sorry, going to places that have homeowner associations and are actually paying dues for this restrictive, racist, illegal behavior. This meant the need for people to come up with other ways to keep out undesirables. So undesirables back then were Jews, blacks, and Asians. Now, if you look at what an undesirable is now, probably Jews, blacks, Asians, uh, gays, LGBTQs, um, people of certain religious sects, probably like Muslims. Uh, yeah, all the un all the undesirables that people of that particular status think. Now, they wanted to make sure that their neighborhood only contained the right or rather white kind of people. Now, you can sit up here and question and, and debate everything I'm saying. All this stuff is history. It's also Kansas City history, and it's still going on right now. Other races language is illegal, but it's often still there. In 2020, I guarantee you, if you look at certain housing contracts and HOA contracts, you will see code words for undesirable people that they de deem undesirable. This that's in a racial con construct. Just because it's illegal and unenforceable doesn't mean it doesn't have a chilling effect when people notice it. Like we noticed the chilling effect. We knew we weren't supposed to be there. This was done through all kinds of means. It was common. For example, setting a minimum square foot of square foot of square footage of homes. For example, we do know that there are certain cultures that have large families that live with them. So if you minimize the square footage, well, you can't have you can't have all those people living in your house. This, of course, guarantees homes that were more expensive. Some local jurisdictions did this too. And also they increased the property taxes. So they lowered the square footage, but increased the property taxes. This past year, Kansas City, Missouri had a high increase of property taxes. Why do you think that was? To get certain people out. Now, this, of course, was the simplest of all. If you allow restrictive rules, it's pretty easy to enforce them only when you feel like it. Now, in some cases, keep this in mind, when people engage in a twisted form of revenue by seeking to enforce rules that only when the person moves out and then hitting them with violation fees, it might go back to weeks or months, then that's a very jaded way of enforcing whatever rules you have. I know people that although they bought their homes, are they actually paying for their homes? Because they violated a certain homeowner association rule, they were evicted from their homes. Or they were removed from their homes. Now, in some other circumstances, if you have a homeowner of color, they may find themselves fined or harassed by petty violations, while worse ones by their white neighbors are ignored. I've actually seen this, and I've actually heard of this. Taking case, um, there were um, an Asian resident or Asian residents in Flushings 
who found themselves fined for putting up safer fences, while ugly chain links fences put up by their white neighbors were ignored. And this was in a majority Asian neighborhood, but somehow the homeowner, the homeowner association offices were all still white. So think about that too. If you have a predominantly black or predominantly Asian population, the homeowners, the homeowning association is still relatively white. Now, check this out. A few years ago, myself and some of the brothers were playing golf at a Teetering Rocks golf course. Now, Teetering Rocks is right off of Nolan Road. While we were there, we were discriminated against by some of the um, individuals who were playing golf and, of course, by the, uh, uh, the golf uh, 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 course master and the individual that was running the clubhouse. We reached out, and um, while we were there, Hold on for a minute. I gotta let this person in. Okay, sorry about that. Had to go do double duty. Okay, so while we were um, while we were there, we got experienced some, some discrimination. So I posted about it. It was shared around. And some black residents actually reached out to us. However, that's as far as it went. They asked what happened, and that's as far as it went. So my thing, the question I had was, why didn't you pursue that further? Why didn't you support us? Now, see, people, now, people of color, if you are in a homeowner association or in a neighborhood that has just, you know, a homeowning association that, that, allows behavior like this and you keep quiet that makes you worse than the individuals that's running the homeowner association so we reached out to them and, and informed them hey look um you know this is what happened uh can we get your support no responses back and that's messed up so that's a prime example of having black residents in your homeowner association and you still treat people who look like them a certain way Now, I'm going to um, kind of wrap up in a little bit, but um, let's just be real here. A lot of homeowner associations are, are um, another way of redlining, another way of handpicking who lives where and who shouldn't come to certain places. And when you do stuff like that, and you also have people pay to enforce this. That in itself is some of the most discriminatory things you can do. Now, the housing market is very discriminatory. And um, Armor Fields, if you're listening, well, I know you will be soon because I'm going to tag you in this uh, broadcast. What, what you're doing in your homeowner association, first of all, not responding to my correspondence, that shows you condone the behavior. And the way your residents acted, it shows that you have a very, very distinct issue with people who don't belong. Now, my son and I were the only African Americans in the neighborhood that were walking up and down the streets, respectfully observing the lights. Now, we saw some other nationalities there as well, too. However, um, for the most part, my, um, I didn't notice anything with them. But when it came to my child and I, I noticed a lot of disrespect. And um, I'm thinking what I might do is I might continue to discuss the incident until you all give a response. Because keep in mind, my son and I, despite what your residents did to us, we were very respectful and we handled it with dignity and class something that I feel that your residents aren't used to seeing or stereotypically don't want to see. Because contrary to popular belief, despite what the media shows you, despite what you hear in, um, in, in certain uh, circles, black people are very, very respectful individuals that have class that is up there with no other. 
We are very intelligent. We are very respectful. We are very dignified. We handle ourselves with the utmost respect and high disposition. And despite what you all threw at us, we still gave respect. Now, I'm only speaking for my son and myself and my family. Keep in mind that just because we showed respect, everyone's not like that. Because, see, if you noticed, if you've been watching social media and been watching the news, you're starting to see people react in all different manners to your racism. I mean, just recently, there was an individual that was taking uh, that was um, uh, disrespectful to a young man over a cell phone. Saw what happened to her. People are tired of it, and it's not just black people. You got white people that's getting tired of y'all's mess too, Armor Fields. Because I shared this uh, story with some of my white friends. And they are very appalled by what took place on the streets of your neighborhood. Now, see, a small piece of me wanted to go and get a bus and just just pick up everybody I know that's of color and park that bus in your neighborhood and walk up and down those public streets and view those lights. Because it's obvious that some of your residents aren't used to seeing classy black folk because we do exist. Now, hopefully, we can come to some kind of resolution on this on this matter, because it's one thing that you know some things happened to us on December twenty second, but now you made it worse by not responding to my correspondence. I I know that you saw it, but now I know that you didn't respond to it. Are you refusing to respond to it? I would like a response. My viewers would like a response. Because despite how you treated my child, my child has a village behind him that loves him and cares for him. And it grows daily. And when this village found out what took place, they were not pleased. What took place on December 22nd and what's continuing to take place now is a stain on the repetition, I'm sorry, on the reputation, reputation of the Armor Fields Home Association. If I were to buy a home in your neighborhood, or if someone was trying to buy a home in your neighborhood, hopefully this broadcast would make them think twice about that. Because I wouldn't want to live next door to someone that allows disrespect to a child. I wouldn't want to live in a neighborhood where a man and his son are almost running over crossing the street. I wouldn't want to live in a neighborhood where guests are allowed to be disrespectful to children. So hopefully, if you're looking at trying to buy a home and you're wanting to buy a home in the, um, in the Armor Fields Homeowner Association, I will really, really ask those questions in regards to how they are when it comes to people of different races and religions and classes and socioeconomic groups because we did not feel welcomed. Not at all. Well, I take that back. Some of your residents were welcoming, but as a whole, we knew we couldn't stay there long. It was a very scary thing on what took place. So hopefully, this broadcast is going to shed some light to it. And hopefully, I invite the Armor Fields Home Association to sit in on this broadcast and discuss what took place or call in. I'm very peaceful. I just want to know why you ignored my correspondence. I'm sorry, I shouldn't say you ignored it. Why you have yet to respond to my correspondence and why this behavior went on. And why it has not? And, and what do you plan on doing to address it? Because I looked on your webpage, I haven't seen anything about 
my correspondence or anything about what happened. One thing that I do is one thing that was raised to me because contrary to what you think, I was taught by my black father to stand up for my black uh, family, for my black child, despite who or what comes at him. Individuals in your neighborhood disrespected my child, disrespected my family, and I need answers. This is Tyrone Gathers Jr. This is the source of the Inkwell, and the Inkwell education and activism overflows like ink. Will it stain and be permanent? God bless. Respond, Armor Fields. Respond. All right, you're listening to K.